superhero movies. Not another one. I can't bear this any longer. Who cares? Yeah, that's um. Superhero fatigue is setting in for a lot of you guys now too, isn't it? Yeah, Marvel and DC are churning them out left, right and center these days. And with DC rarely impressing, and with Marvel now feeling a little confused as to what to do post Thanos, it's clear we're in a bit of a slump with this genre. Top that off with poor box office returns, critical flop after critical flop, and Hollywood's apparent inability to cast upstanding citizens to play, you know, Heroes. I've come to the conclusion that there's only one thing left to do. Get out of here. Yeah, there's a whole other world out there, you know. Yeah, the USA takes the spotlight as always, with even non-Marvel and DC superheroes still being brought to the silver screen by American studios. And I get why Hollywood is where the money's at. And superhero films cost less than what it would take to solve world hunger. What the s***? But modern technology is making filmmaking cheaper and more accessible by the day. And as such, dozens and dozens of countries have now produced and released their own superhero movies, free of Marvel and DC influence. But are they any good? Well, let's start off strong and begin our journey in a country whose movie and TV industry has really taken the world by storm of late. South Korea. Yeah, with worldwide smashes like Parasite, Squid Game, and Train to Busan, I was very curious to see what superhero offerings Korea had to offer. And after some research, I quickly found out that Train to Busan's director, Yeon Sang Ho, directed a superhero film himself, 2018's Psychokinesis. So what's this movie about? Well, it's about a restaurant owner called Rumi, as her neighborhood is said to be bulldozed by a mafia-funded construction company. And you know how in Spider-Man 3, where God gets bored, so he dumps on Earth an unexplained meteor to give someone superpowers? Yeah, well, same thing happens here. The recipient? Rumi's estranged alcoholic father, who quickly develops the powers of a telekinetic a la Jean Grey. And thus, the film becomes about the father and daughter's strange relationship, plus many scenes of people flinging. <laughs> Great shot! Now, given this was directed by the Train to Busan director, I was kind of surprised by how goofy the film is. But it's kind of weird, actually, because the film explores some quite dark themes at the same time. And as such, the tone ends up feeling extremely uneven because of it. Seriously, you've got this moment. <laughs> And literally in the same scene, we get this. I mean, it's well acted and even effective, I dare say. But these sudden shifts in tone is giving me viewers whiplash. <laughs> That being said, I think that's the film's only real flaw. Because Psychokinesis has a lot that does genuinely work. I liked the evolving relationship between the father and daughter. There's some pretty funny moments scattered about, and the action scenes are fun and creative, which isn't bad at all, considering this is South Korea's first ever superhero movie. The cast also have a very friendly and redeeming quality about them, so they're easily rootable, as they face off against some despicable villains. And the ending, I especially quite liked, as it had a bittersweet, but wholesome turn to it. And at about an hour 40, the film doesn't overstay its welcome. I recommend checking this one out, because it doesn't rely on its superhero gimmick to tell a story. Its overall tone is confusing at times, but I still enjoyed it. It's on Netflix, so if you're subscribed, give it a watch. Okay, so we're of course looking at superhero movies around the world, but this next country is taking it a step further. Because in the same vein as Marvel and DC, it's actually developing its own cinematic universe. And for that, we're going to Indonesia. Yeah, Indonesia, as it turns out, has quite the thriving comic book scene, and they're currently adapting plenty of its heroes into several feature-length films, all culminating in an Avengers-style team-up film in the future, in what is known as the Bumi Langit Cinematic Universe. Bumi Langit. Okay, so apparently that's Indonesian for Earth and Heaven. But by God, that doesn't work internationally. It sounds like the Indonesian term for hemorrhoids. Yeah, sorry, can't come to work today. I got a bad case of Bumi Langit. Okay, so name aside, I decided to check out the BCU's debut feature. Enter 2019's Gundala. 
This movie is about a guy called San Chaka, who has your atypical superhero qualities. He has the lightning powers of Raiden, the power source of the Flash, the martial arts skills of Shang-Chi, and the dead parents of, well, take your pick. I fed up with his world. Oh, and the villains aren't too original either, from Two-Face over here to, well, tell me who this reminds you of. <laughs> <laughs> It looks very, uh, similar. <laughs> yeah, Gondala is pretty derivative. Which would be fine if the story and characters were on point, but unfortunately, I just couldn't get into this one. Now, first off, some positives. The fight scenes and action sequences, pretty damn good. I mean, being an Indonesian picture, I'm naturally gonna compare it to the Raid Redemption. And whilst it doesn't quite match that film's level of choreography, it's not bad at all. Though artificial camera shake and the heavy use of this powder effect did help. Also, I digged the opening of the movie. You see, the film begins with Sanchaka as a kid, and the film does a great job making you feel very empathetic towards him, cause he goes through hell in this, which makes you want to root for him. Shout out to this kid, he's a good actor. Unfortunately though, once Sanchaka becomes an adult, the film falls apart. It starts off by dumping a sh load of characters on you all at once, and I couldn't remember anyone's names or what their motivations were or even if they were good or bad guys, it was so convoluted. I mean the main villain does have an interesting backstory, but his motivations are really stupid. Stupid. Prepare yourself for this. You see, he ends up setting out to contaminate Indonesia's rice supply to turn the children of pregnant women immoral. You heard that correct. Immoral. This green substance apparently makes babies evil. This is not a comedy. There's also just a bunch of random sh** that annoyed me. Like, check this scene out where Sanchaka gets his boost from lightning and this pretty frail old man tries to touch him. <laughs> oh, well I guess that guy's a goner. I'm not dead! Okay. Also, unlike Psychokinesis, there's next to no relationship building between characters. Like, Sanchaka meets a kid and his older sister, and there's great potential for him here to build a romance with the girl and a fatherly-like bond with the kid. But where do they go with this? Oh yeah, nowhere! Sanchaka also has barely any interactions with the film's major antagonist. Hell, he doesn't even find out about him until about an hour 17 in the film. Like, check this out. There's a scene where the villain kills this guy and his family. Who is this guy? So why not make these people Sanchaka's family? It would streamline the movie so much and develop a personal resentment between hero and villain. Movie fixed. Oh, and the ending of the movie. It's so rushed and poorly handled, it's laughable. What really threw me off was a cameo from a character called Shri Asi, who was next in line to get her own BCU movie, which came out in 2022. But she shows up completely out of nowhere to stop a Van Sanchaka's chasing. And before he knows what What's going on, she's gone. Seriously, a random character we've never seen before just shows up the f out of nowhere to save the day. And literally a few minutes later, the credits roll. What the f It's one of the worst cases of Deus Ex Machina I've ever seen in my life. It'd be like if in the Avengers, Captain Marvel showed up to destroy the nuke. And before Tony, Steve and everyone knew what was going on, she f***s off. What just happened? I mean, you can't do that, guys. And it pains me. It pains me to talk trash about this movie. Because it's pretty competently made. Costume design, set design, acting, cinematography, visual effects. It's all good. From a story standpoint, the film's a mess. But from a technical standpoint, this film's a masterpiece. And you might think I'm being a bit overly dramatic with the praise there. You're probably like, well, okay, the film looks decent, but I've seen better. Yeah, but have you seen better considering Gondala's production budget? Look, take into account that the MCU's debut feature cost $140 million to produce. Okay, so how much do you think Gondala took to produce? Pause the video and pop a comment below. Let's see if you can get it. No cheating. Okay, got a number in mind? Alright. Gondala's production budget was officially $2 million.
Two million. That's it? That's it. This number blew my mind when I discovered it. I was like, this can't be right. That's the kind of budget a found footage horror film from 20 years ago had, but they somehow managed to create a VFX heavy, well choreographed superhero film for about one and a half percent of Iron Man's budget. I mean, compare Gundala's production budget to a superhero film made way back in the 60s. You might be like, okay, Adam West Batman movie was cheaper to make. Uh, no, because you got to factor in inflation. How did they do this? So for that, I applaud this movie. I still don't think it's any good, but I am at least intrigued to see what the BCU does next. Okay, so the vast majority of foreign language superhero films are relatively new, with many no doubt getting inspired by the success of 21st century American productions. But did any country outside the US take a stab at making one before the turn of the new millennium? Well, yeah. And for that, we gotta head to Hong Kong. And you can tell that this is a pre-MCU DCEU production, for the film features the Invisible Woman and Wonder Woman. Yes, I am serious, these are actually their superhero names. Uh, trademarks, not so much of a concern at the time it would seem. So yeah, this is 1993's The Heroic Trio, which tells the story of an evil master hell-bent on kidnapping babies so he can find a new emperor of China. And the three women in his way are the famed bounty hunter thief catcher and the previously mentioned women, one of wonder and one invisible. The invisible woman, by the way, you'll probably recognize well, when you actually see her. Yeah, that there is a young Michelle Yeoh. So hot right now. So, is the film any good? <laughs> I mean, I knew I was in for something else when I started noticing the thickest stunt lines I've ever seen in my life. Look, you can see the strings. And look, pace-wise, the film is rough. Not because it's too slow. No, it's too fast. I couldn't believe how quickly it darts from scene to scene. It never lets up, and you'd think that'd be a good thing, but uh, eh, no. However, the film has one redeeming quality. <laughs> It's batsh crazy. Just wow. I mean, the heroic trio doesn't really work as a film. I didn't give a sh about the characters or the story, but the action scenes, oh, they are a sight to behold. <laughs> You know, when the heroes tell you to eat lead, I, I don't think that's what they had in mind. <laughs> now you might think shooting a bullet out of your mouth is quite the talent, but have you ever seen someone shoot bullets with... Bullets? <laughs> This is the greatest film ever made. How have I not heard of this? I mean, it is spectacularly bonkers. And to the film's credit, it does legitimately have good choreography and camera work. All right, that's a cool shot. That's a good cinematography. But uh, keep watching this bit. Well, at this rate, the bullet should hit its target about, um, next Wednesday. But the highlight of the film has got to be when Wonder Woman goes in hot with her bike. And sure, it looks like she's going to crash into this wall and kill a bunch of hostages. But you've got to take into account this woman's superpower. Physics are her b Hong Kong won, MCU, nothing. Oh, and then there's the final showdown, which culminates in a big explosion, which our heroes definitely shouldn't have survived that. How are you not dead? And it looks like the day is saved. Until. <laughs> Michelle, push the shit out of that mannequin. <laughs> you can just envision the stage hand just working the arm. <laughs> oh, but they take things a step further.
you know, this scene actually doesn't go the direction you're thinking it's now going, but we are getting dangerously close to hell territory here. Don't let your kids watch it. Okay, so despite the entertaining nature of a film created by a bunch of bonkers individuals, Heroic Trio is not a good movie by any measure. I mean, can you imagine if a film like this got a sequel? <laughs> But let's swiftly move on before I lose my sanity to something that is the polar opposite of this film. And for that, we're heading to... Italia. Seriously, Italy, your national anthem slaps. And when I heard that they had a superhero film that very almost got a nomination for Best Foreign Language Film at the Academy Awards, I had to check it out. Enter They Call Me Jeeg. Okay. Jeeg. Okay, so apparently this film is based on an anime called Steel Jig, and they actually reference this show in the movie. The film stars Claudio, uh, Santa Maria, as the lead, and you might recognize him from the airport sequence in Casino Royale. And he also steps in for Christian Bale in the Italian dubs of the Dark Knight films. Questa è la fine. Hey, e sono Batman. So yeah, Italian Batman in this movie gets himself superpowers after he gets dunked into radioactive waste. Wow, that's something only parodies do these days. Mayor West, you have lymphoma. Oh my. However, the twist in the film is that Santa Maria's character is certainly no hero. He's a low-life crook who pickpockets, he works for drug gangs, he has no friends, and he spends most of his time cooked up in his apartment watching hardcore so making a guy like this into your protagonist, yeah, he's not someone you end up rooting for, and um, isn't that kind of important in a superhero movie? I mean, okay, I know there exists well-received superhero films about more villainous characters. Joker comes to mind, but Joker himself makes a much better protagonist than this guy does. As, yeah, Joker does despicable things in his film, but you see the sh** he goes through in that movie and you sort of begin to empathize with him. A sort of dark, twisted side of you comes out as you watch, and you kind of get caught up in his madness. Not to mention Joaquin Phoenix is just a joy to watch perform. But Italian Batman here plays a bottom-of-the-barrel waste of space base human being. And yes, he does have a redemptive arc, but it comes far too late in the film if you ask me. Because once he does start doing the right thing, he's already lied and cheated so many times, I had already given up on him. It's why characters like Helena from Dial of Destiny don't work for me. If you keep screwing over those that want to help you over and over again, then I'll end up rooting for the villain more, because at least he owns up to being a d And when you add in a scene where this guy basically ends up someone yeah this guy can go f himself and yeah i did end up rooting for the villain more in this movie as whilst he's an even worse human being actor luca marinelli at least has a ton of fun chewing up the scenery again that's why the joker works if you're charismatic enough you can get away with a lot but on top of the hero being a massive jerk the film is also incredibly dark in turn like matt reeves batman movie is like barbie in comparison to this you've got characters getting maimed over Dosing, burned alive, torn to shreds by dogs? It's just a deeply unpleasant movie. Which is the point, I guess, and if that is your jam, and you want a super grim and realistic take on the superhero genre, you might like this. But for yours truly, I'm never watching this movie again. I mean, Lord, I need some cheering up after this one. I mean, give me a country that's not afraid to make something unapologetically Bonkers. That'll do. Well, this is just what the doctor ordered. I mean, how can I not talk about foreign language cinema without mentioning the biggest movie business? In the world. I mean, there's a reason why PewDiePie isn't the most subscribed YouTuber anymore. Now, India actually has a lot of superhero flicks, so I needed a film that would be a good representation of what Bollywood has to offer. And I don't think it gets much bigger than Shah Rukh Khan, often dubbed the king of Bollywood. And in 2011, he starred in a superhero flick of his own. Ra one. So what's this movie about? Well, 
Tell me if this sounds familiar. It's about a super-powered shape-shifting individual who arrives in this world to kill a young boy. But another super-powered hero joins the fray to protect the boy as he begins to form a father-like bond with him. Hmm. Man, if I had a nickel for every time I saw a foreign language superhero film rip off Terminator, uh, I'd have two nickels. Which isn't a lot, but it's weird that it's happened twice, right? Okay, the film has a little bit more to it than that. Instead of Terminators coming from the future, they're coming from a video game world. Instead of Sarah Connor, the mother is the wife of our Terminator substitute. And instead of a soundtrack from Brad Fiedel, we got Bollywood numbers. <laughs> I mean, Bollywood is wonderfully bonkers in this regard, because so many musical numbers come the f*** out of nowhere, where it turns out every single character in the movie can sing, every single character in the movie can dance, and there's always a guy on standby waiting to break out their handy wind machine. Medium setting. But it's amazing. I love it. We got synchronized dance routines. We got a Hindi cover of Stand By Me. We got... Shawty, I'm gonna get you. You know I'm gonna get you. you know it's... Is that it, Con? Teddy picture come a hero. Holy sh! It is. <laughs> Seriously, they got a Con to sing in Hindi in this, and his song, it's so catchy. <laughs> Seriously, that is so much fun to say. Try it. Chumakachello, 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 Sorry. Yeah, this song was dubbed the trademark of the film's campaign and ended up becoming the most downloaded song in India that year. If you don't want to watch the film, at least check out the song on YouTube. But oh yeah, this is a superhero movie, right? Well, that aspect of the movie honestly takes a bit of a back seat, but when the action scenes do occur, they're a little rough around the edges, but they're over the top and quite creative, as one would expect from Bollywood. Many of you guys might have seen the Corridor crew react to this movie, and it is indeed a wonder to behold. Pfft, screw gravity! The rest of the film, though, is a bit of a mixed bag. I mean, I do like the cast and the dynamic they share, and oddly enough, the villain I thought was quite intimidating. Yeah, you wouldn't think that in a movie that has scenes like this. But Rao One is indeed let down by some pretty awkward comedy. And it's also two and a half hours long. And does a silly, zany, action, comedy, musical need to be that? Hell, it's so long, they even decided to throw in an intermission in this. Let's all go to the lobby. Well, as I have become to understand, longer run times are more of an accepted thing in Bollywood. From what I've heard, cinema in India is seen as more of a social experience, and as such, the general movie going audience wants to spend more time there. So, as long as you're down for that bloated runtime and you're interested in checking out what Bollywood has to offer, I say give Ra one a watch. Alcohol is recommended, but as long as you're in a goofy mood, it's a fun time. Woo! Superhero landing! So there we go, that's a decent but admittedly half-baked look at what the rest of the world has to offer. From what I've seen so far, I don't think Marvel will be dethroned anytime soon. But there are loads more foreign language superhero films out there, so maybe if this video does well, I'll take a look at some more. Let me know in the comments if you know of one I should check out. Much love to my Patreon supporters, if you want to support me over there as well, then link is in the description, and subscribe if you happen to be new. Much love guys, namaste.